Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Talcott channel. I hope you guys are all doing wonderfully well. The season is nearly over, it's soon to be over, and now is the time for us to create your team of the season. Everyone who's watching right now, thank you very much for joining me. You've got a massive part to play, huge in fact, because we're going to go through something pretty cool here, which is provided by Sky Sports. Let's give them a shout out. It's a team of the year. There's different formations. I've settled on this one. In this video, we will go through the nominees and you will be voting for who you want to be in the Premier League team of the year for 2020-2021. And we will choose your team of the year. I will, of course, put forward my options, who I would like to see. And at the end of this video, I will reveal two teams, my team, and a notable mentions team because there have been lots of fantastic performances uh, this season. So make sure you are ready. Make sure you're ready to get into the chat because what I want you to do, guys, in terms of the voting is I want you to say the name, the surname of the player when we get into each, each one. Before I get into that, a couple of things. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this video by the end of it. I'll try and make content that involves you. And another reason to subscribe and hit the notification bell is because tomorrow I will be revealing my final, and I mean it this time, my final England squad. Of course, it's moved to 26 teams now. And uh, there's been a lot of talk on Twitter over the last few days about who those players should be that come into the squad. I will be revealing mine tomorrow probably live on this channel. So hit the notification bell and get yourselves involved in that one as well. I'd love to hear what you guys have got to say. Final thing to say is I promised I would do this. This is a book from Luke Williams, uh, a first time author. It's called Watch the Throne, the tactics behind the Premier League's European champions. Of course, there's gonna be a new one soon, but it's really cool actually. It's got literally all the tactics and bits and pieces like that. Um, I'm reading it at the moment. So if you want to check it out, search that, Watch the Throne, Luke Williams. I said I'd give him a shout out. There you go, mate. Congratulations on that book. Let's get into this then, guys. Uh, hit the like button if you haven't hit it yet as well. And we will begin. So I've gone with this formation. And of course, there are like millions di of different formations. But I just felt like, with certainly with the players that I wanted to get in there and all of those attacking uh, options, it felt like this was the, the right way to go. So let's get into it. First up, with the goalkeeper. Get yourself ready to vote. Don't vote until I say, but if you've got any comments, I'm going to be looking at the chat pretty religiously in this one. So if you've got an opinion to make, if you're desperate to get your guy into this team, I want to hear why that person needs to be in the team. Okay, let's have a look at the nominees, first of all. So for the goalkeeper position, Emmy Martinez, Nick Pope, Edward Mendy, Casper Schmeichel, and Edison Allison. Not in there. After that header, surely deserves that at least at least um, player of the month, surely. So let me go through what I think is right, okay? I think out of these nominations, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to give you two. I'm going to narrow it down to two. So for me, Edison, yep. I, I think the hype over Edison is just, but it's still a lot. Like with some of his passes, yes, they are stunning. But again, it, often they're just like, it's just a long boot. Am I being harsh on that? I don't know. Anyway, I don't feel like he's had enough to do to be deserving of the goalkeeper of the year nominee. Kasper Schmeichel, I think he is slept on massively. And I think that FA Cup final showed that uh, exactly. Um, I think he's great. He's been really consistent. Has he stood out? Maybe not. And I guess there I'm kind of... Um, contradicting myself. Edward Mendy's come in and he has taken Chelsea to another level. A lot of talk about that FA Cup final goal. Would, would he have saved that one? Would he have saved that one? I don't know. But I do think that he has come in and done well for, for the side, for, for Chelsea. Slightly nervous about him with his feet sometimes, but overall I think he's done well. Nick Pope's had a good solid season again. I think you can always rely on him to do well. For me, Emmy Martinez is my front runner. I think this will be a, a really easy one. Like I think with the amount of um, amount of saves that he's made, his like save percentage is at seventy percent, which is ridiculous. I think the amount of clean sheets. I'm sure we can have a little quick look at that as well. Let's see if we can see it with the defensive actions. If we can sit, find clean sheets. This is FB Ref, by the way, guys. If you are wondering, let's have a look at goalkeeping stats in terms of um, clean sheets. Oh, hang on, wrong one. A little bit further down. Here we go. Clean sheets. Edison 
18. I mean, but that's is that down to him or is it down to them? Martinez with 15 in a team that's mid-table. I feel like this is a really easy one. For me, it's got to be Martinez. But my nominations, are, I'll go with, you can have Edison, you can have Mendy, and you can have Martinez. Those top three when it comes to the clean sheets this season. Vote right now. Go, 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 go. I will have a look at the chat right now. No hard feelings. Just pick Edison. He's the obvious choice. I'm not, I, I, I disagree with that personally. The votes are coming in now. They are flying in now. Wow, the intensity of those votes. That is ridiculous. I think this is pretty clear for me. It is. Oh, Meslier gets a shout out there in the chat as well. I think it's Martinez. Martinez is the first player in our team of the year. Massive congratulations. I'm, I'm certain he'll be watching right now. He's probably been spamming in the chat. Emmy Martinez, I agree with that. He was in my team of the season. So congratulations to our boy, Emmy, who has to subscribe to the channel because he knows his football. I'm sure he does. And I'm sure all you guys have done as well. Senny Dieng should be in there as well, but it's wrong league, mate. Right, right back. This is difficult. Or actually, should we go? Should we go through it? Let's go through it normally. So nominees, there's quite a few nominees here um, from Sky. Luke Ayling, I'm going to just give him a notable mention because I think he's had a really strong season for Leeds, and it's a shame that there's not going to be any Leeds players in here. And on this, there, there wasn't many Leeds players available for you to use, so uh, he's not in there for here. But I think he's a shout for this. The right back position is there's a lot of talk about it at the moment, which is interesting. Trent has got a lot of uh, he's got seven assists this season. But he was, we can't forget how poor he was for that November to February stretch. In terms of team of the year, that has to hurt you a little bit. Reese James is, I love Reese James. You guys know I love uh, Reese James. But I feel like he's been in, out of, in and out of the team as well. I don't think there's been that same consistency with him. Um, personally, João Cancelo, it's kind of the opposite with him. He's not played the same amount of minutes. Um, since Carl Walker came back into the side, but maybe that's just kind of the Champions League uh, element of it. He did come in that inverted fullback role, did do brilliantly there. I think Vladimir Kufal is a massive shout for this as well. I've got to be honest. I think the thing with this for me is that it comes down to loads of different criteria, and I'm massively going to contra contradict myself at different moments during this stream. But for me, for the expectations and the transfer price of Kufal for what West Ham have achieved and how integral he's been in that he's just had a, like, a really amazing season is he the this is the one position where I, I'm probably not picking the best player but in terms of completely going past expectations I feel like he he is my front runner for this one James Justin really unlucky with the season that he had um, but I think those are your three nominees for this one I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna go with Cancelo I think it's Cancelo or it's Kufal. Um, if you want to chuck in another one, if there's a strong enough third option, then feel free to chuck it into the chat now. Go and vote. And it's kicking off again. Unbelievable scenes, this, guys. 813 people watching right now. This is your team of the year. You will be deciding on this team. So get involved. Dallas has been playing left back, not right back, so we can't have him there. Cancelo seems to be the strong one at the moment. It's, uh, oh, it's close. <sighs> This is so tight. I'm going to have to go. It's I'm going to have to go Cancelo. Oh, first one that we've disagreed on. Cancelo seems to be the one that's gone through. Where is Ailing? Ailing's not available on this option. You can vote for Ailing if you want to. SJ uh, SJM5. Um it seems like it's Cancelo. Tough for Kufal. I think he's been really hard done by there. For what he's done and Cancelo's not he's been in and out in terms of the best 11 this is what's funny about this one right although I understand why you're voting for him he's not in the Man City best 11 at the moment he's not in the, he won't start in the Champions League final that seems odd to me that's why I wouldn't put him in there but you have voted you have spoken you must you must use your vote you must okay we move forward Centre backs. So we need two from these centre backs here. There are lots of options. And when I went on who scored, I tell you what was really interesting. On who scored, in terms of the um, the average um, scores, you know, out of ten, the centre back in the team of the season for them was actually um, Tarkovsky or Burnley. So shout out to Tarkovsky. The obvious options for me, I think, are. I think. <sighs> I think for me, Wesley Fofana, when we think about expectations, we think about the pressure that Leicester City might be under in, in games. I think for a 19-year-old to come in and have the season that he's had, I think he's got to be a massive shout for this. So Wesley Fofana is 
is definitely an op option. I think Ruben Diaz is a shoe in, to be honest, personally. And I think I'm. I think with. I think the easy one to do is put Diaz in. I don't think there's going to be any qualms over that one, right? So I'm going to put Ruben Diaz goes in. It's the second one I think that we're going to need to vote on. So for me, like I said, Wesley Fofana, Harry Maguire, despite the recent injury, I think you've got to put him in as a nominee. I think he's had a really good season for them. Um, and uh, I think Craig Dawson could be an option as well. I think that's a good shout. I think those are the three for me. For me, it's really down to Wesley Fofana and Harry Maguire. I, th I would give it to Wesley Fofana. I think he's had that good of a season. And for, if Leicester City can get themselves into the into the Champions League for a 19-year-old to come in and having played, what, 30-odd games or something like that before he came here, big price tag as well. For him not to be in there, I think would be unfair. But it's not down to me, guys. It's down to you. Start voting right now. Who is your second centre-back in the team of the year? Fofana, Maguire, or if there's another option, Stones. Of course, Stones. We can talk about Stones as well. For me, I'm going to say for me a lot, aren't I? When it comes to Stones, I feel like I don't think he's exceeded expectations. He's just had a kind of a redemption story. And I think most centre-backs would look quite good against uh, with Ruben Dias behind you and all that quality in front of you. I don't feel like he deserves it. I think he's done brilliantly. I think he's had a great season. But I would still put Wesley Fofana above him. Uh, vote right now, guys. A lot of people saying Stones. Maybe I'm wrong here. So Stones, Fofana and Maguire, vote right now. Wow, okay, so we're getting a lot of stones, a lot of Fafana, a lot of Maguire. It's all over the place at the moment. Will we settle on one? I think Fafana's got this, you know. Maguire's pushing back. This, this is amazing. Can't send a notable mention. I think that's fair as well. I think Fafana's got this. I think Fafana's got it. And I'm quite happy about that. Let's have a quick look at Fafana's stats because I think that might be worth like saying because some people might get annoyed about this because that might be an interesting one to, to look at and it, it might put Maguire over the edge. But I think we've had our vote now, to be honest. Let's have a look at defensive actions. You might not get it totally because you'll have a lot of um, midfielders when it comes to the, um, the defensive third tackles and things like that and tackle win percentage. Um, Luke Ayling looked right up there, obviously playing for that kind of team. wan Saka, notable mention. That's why I put out on Twitter the other day that he should be right up there. Not many centre-backs here. Kufau, look, with, his, with the amount of tackles that he's made in the defensive third, has been crucial for them as well. I can't see much on, uh, on those guys there. So I'm going to go with... I've gone with Fafane. It's been done. It has been done. Right, we move on to our left-back. I'm not going to waste too much time on this. I think that if anyone can give me a shout in the chat that isn't Luke Shaw, then um, good luck. <laughs> I'm happy to have a vote on it, but I, I don't see... I think this is a quick one, isn't it? I think it has to be Luke Shaw. His key passes, his numbers are just ridiculous for this season. And I think we should definitely have a quick look at him. Tierney, maybe you could chuck in there. I think it has to be Luke Shaw. Stuart Dallas is a great option as well, with the amount of different positions that he's played. He scored eight goals this season. Stuart Dallas, I think he deserves, uh, he deserves it. Uh, Cresswell, some good assists there, yeah. But I still think Luke Shaw is... Miles above. I don't even... I, vote now, guys. Who do you want as your right uh, left back? I think it's got to be Shaw. And in the meantime, I'm going to go find him because I think FB Ref will, will back me up on this one, especially when we get to like the, uh, the sort of uh, uh, more uh, offensive stats. If you look at his where he was at the start of the season and where he is now, as in like his key passes and things like that, I bet he's, I bet he's right up there for that. Let's have a look. Scroll along a little bit. See if we can find him. I bet he'd be up there, you know. Bruno Mount, Grealish, Song, look, there you go, wow. So the first defender to be up there, I think that's, that says a hell of a lot. For him to have 71 key passes this season says uh, a lot. Um, so Luke Shaw goes in, I think this is a really easy one. Regulon's not going in, nice try, not having that. Um, right, guys, uh, just to say, if you are enjoying the stream so far, please do me a favour and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new, because we can do these kind of things for other things as well. Um, maybe we do it tomorrow with the with the um, the, t the uh, squad for England. We move on to a midfield two. Now, I think with this midfield two, what I would keep in mind is that you can have one. I think one needs to be a defensive midfielder, and then one needs to be something different. So it can be a bit of a more progressive um, midfielder. So let's go with the defensive one first. And I think there are two obvious options for this. Maybe three if you want to chuck that in there. The three for me are, I think you put in, um, where is he? I think Thomas Suchek is an option in terms of that defensive midfielder for this season. I think Declan Rice is an option. 
I think if if he'd still been playing for this run in, I think West Ham would, would have more points than they have right now. And here's my choice. Now, I don't think people will go for the, him because of the fact that Spurs have been disappointing this season. But I think Pierre-Emile Hoiberg should be right up there. And I'm going to show you why. Because when you look at the tackles that this guy has made, and of course he's had to make those tackles, and I will contradict myself with a little bit with one um, defensive action that he's like he struggled with, right? But if you look at the amount of work that he's done for this team, not that he's wanted to do that, look how many tackles he's made. 112 tackles. He's made, he's 177. And I think if you look next to him, Luke Ayling, right? Luke Ayling plays for a team that is so progressive, like, you know, is so um, heavy metal, right? Hoiberg's literally been that defensive rock for, for Spurs. I think he's had an amazing season. His passing uh, completion's really, really strong as well. I think he got himself, was it an assist or a goal at the weekend, which is not, not that important. But I just think, if you think of the, the amount of pressures that he's putting in, He's, look, he's up there for that as well. If we scroll along this, do you see that he's at the top for most of these defensive actions? In his own defensive third, in mid third, top of that tree. Attacking third, less so because he's not getting forward as much. The one thing I would say that is damning against him is in terms of being tackled, um, uh, being dribbled past, he's, he's ahead of most people. But I just think there's something to be said about the season that he's had. I think he's had a really strong season for a team where he's been the entirety of the defensive um, solidity, I think, at times for, for Spurs. So for me, I would chuck him in there. I would chuck him in there. But it's up to you guys. I've given you the three nominees. Kante is a shout as well. Tillemans, I think we'll put him in the nominees for the second part of this. So don't worry about Tillemans um, t uh, too much for now. So here is the vote, guys. I want you to vote on Suchek. Declan Rice or Pierre-Emile Hoiberg? Who is your choice? Basuma is a good shout as well, actually. As is Ndidi, I think he's had a good season as well. I don't think Rodri's had that great a season, I'll be honest. So I wouldn't put him in there. Tommy Sweatman says it needs to be Ndidi. I think Ndidi has had a really good season. Basuma's had injuries at different times. I think Hoiberg's played like most minutes. So out of those three nominees that I've put forward, who would you like to have in your team of the year? Suchek seems to be winning out at the moment. Out of those three. So those three, Hoiberg, Suchek and Declan Rice. Who is your choice? Who are you voting for? It looks like it might be... I think it's Suchek. I think it is Suchek. I think, look, as good as Suchek is, I think there's a team that's tailored for him. And as the season progressed, I think look, he is that Fellaini, but kind of guy. But I just wouldn't put him in there. He wouldn't be in mine. But fair enough. You've 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 made your choice. You've chosen Suchek. Congratulations. So let's put Suchek into the team. He's your defensive mid. So the second one. So this is where we're talking about the likes of Tillemans. We're talking about um, you could put Mason Mount in that position, I guess. Madison maybe De Bruyne. I think out of these guys. These are sort of, I think this is where I would put Gundogan. Ward Prowse has been classed. That's a great point from Joseph. Thank you for that, mate. I think you put, I think Ward Prowse is a shout. I think he is a shout. I just, I would have put him there. So you've got, I think for this next spot, you've got Ward Prowse, you've got Gundogan. And let's remember just to show you guys, so don't panic too much. We've got three attacking um, midfielders still to play here. So there's a lot of options for who we can have in here. I think that's Gundogan's spot personally, for the goals that he scored, is it 12 goals this season? Something like that. The amount of goals that he scored, how he's sort of, from that starting position, that rotation of keeping the ball, his understanding of space, the timing of his runs, I think he's been absolutely just fantastic for them. Tillemans, he's at the front of my mind at the moment, obviously, because of the FA Cup and stuff like that. But I think he's a shout. And if you thought he was the right shout, then fine. Um, what I'm going to say is Mason Mount, I'm going to put him as a nominee moving forward. So I'm going to keep him out of it at the moment. So I think from the midfield positions, I would say that the two are, I think it's got to be Tillemans or Gundogan, in my opinion, as the nominees. So who are you wanting to vote for? Gundogan, sorry, I know I always say it wrong. Gundogan, 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 there you go. So Gundogan or Tillemans? Who are your options? We will move into the attacking options in a second. So vote right now, guys. Hopefully you're enjoying this. It feels like it's got to be Gundogan. I think that that makes sense to me as well. I did a video recently talking about how Leicester became great again. And Tillemans is such a huge part of that. 
And so go check that out if you, you know, if you don't, I love the guy, yeah? yeah? He's gorgeous, isn't he? But I would say Gundogan is the right choice. Um, Kante, I think Kante, with Kante, I think the focus really with him is probably more the Champions League performances as much as anything else. And I think that's why he doesn't make it in on this occasion. And a shout out to Basuma as well. I didn't give him a shout out. Okay, so Gundogan. Gundogan, sorry. Gundogan. 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 Gundogan uh, makes it into our, our, and I mean that, team of the year. Gundogan. Say it with me. Everyone say it with me on three. One, two, three. Gundogan. How do you vote? You vote in the chat, guys. You vote in the chat. Right. Midfield. So starting through the middle, I think this is really easy. I think this is really obvious. I think this has to be Bruno Fernandes. I think it has to be. I think, I guess, the other options are Jesse Lingard. But for half a season, is that enough? Grealish through the middle. I don't think he's really played in that position, so I wouldn't do that. Um, I feel like this is a really obvious one and the stats are just amazing. They really back it up. I think we're struck. I don't think we need to take too long on this one because when you look at that, we were showing you earlier those key passes. It's amazing what he's done uh, this season and, and his goal and shot creation, all of those things. His expected assists, absolutely everything. He's just been on fire this season for for them. Expected assists, let's see where he is on that one. I think he's pretty high, 11. He's got So he's bang on with his expected assists. Um, obviously, he scored so many goals for for them. His goal involvements, yes, a lot of those are penalties, but his overall, his you know, his key passes, he's top when it comes to key passes with ninety three. Oh, you guys might be struggling to see that. Sorry if you are. Hang on. Yeah, we can't. Mm, can't do it. Anyway, ninety three when it comes to key passes, he's up um, well ahead of Mason Mount, who's next to him. I think Mason Mount might be the shout. There's KDB as well. Yes, there are like 10 penalties, you're saying. I get it. I still think you can't, you can't gloss over just how great he's been. You can't. You cannot do it. I think he's been... Uh, Man United don't finish second if he doesn't play. But I tell you what, if we want, do you want some nominees for this? I think Eze's a shout. I think Eze is a shout, to be fair. Um, maybe it is Eze. Maybe we should go with Eze. <laughs> Who wants it? Who wants it? Let's, let's blow this up. <laughs> let's blow this team up. Um vote right now I, I, I you can't you can't convince me that it can't be bruno has to be the voting's obvious it is bruno he goes in there so on the right hand side this is where i'm going to put this is so tough now right actually let's start here let's go up front first and we'll go to those wide areas because i think that's where it's a little bit a little bit trickier because uh, if we then go to the because i think up front in terms of players of the year i think it's pretty easy this one like it's it has to be um it's got to be Harry Kane, like surely, right? Look at the look at the stats for Harry Kane. It just blows your mind. Like twenty two goals, thirteen assists, and I was looking at his goal and shot creation. And what I loved about that when it came to him was that he, the amount of goals that he's created from dribbling, which is not what you would expect from Harry Kane. Harry Kane, five goals from dribbling. This is very really annoying. You want to see this, don't you? Let's, go, let's make sure you... Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Should be able to see it. No. There we go. So five. Um, five goals from dribbles. You know, what was I said? 22 goals, 13. I mean, let's not mess about with this. Is there anyone else you can go? Lacazette, 13 goals. That's hilarious. <laughs> you know, Eze's right next to him. Let's not forget how great Eze is. I just think this is Harry Kane's greatest season. I think he's right up there in player of the of the of the season, quite possibly. I think I, I, he's just amazing. Bamford's had a great season. Watkins had a great season. We'll go through some of those notable mentions as well. But this one feels pretty obvious for me. I don't even think we need a, a vote, really, do we? I mean, I mean, if we do, then fine. But I don't think we do. I think it's got to be Harry Kane. I don't know in what world, what team, anyone's not putting Harry Kane in their team of the season, and he goes in. Um. Now it's going to get naughty, real naughty, because the left-hand side and the right-hand side are just really difficult. Let's start with the right-hand side, because I think the left-hand side is even harder. So on the right-hand side, the options include, I think Saka, I might chuck in this one, give him a chance. Emil Smith-Rowe, you can maybe put in there. Jota, I don't think he's started enough games and he's fallen away. 
Foden is on that left-hand side. I think your big nominees here are Kevin De Bruyne. And I think, I think it's Salah. I think it's down to those two for me. Because I think Gundogan goes in ahead of De Bruyne this season. Uh, on that right-hand side, I think it comes down to those two. The left-hand side is going to be absolutely outrageous, by the way. But if we're going for the positions that people play in, De Bruyne at times can play on that right-hand side. Mares, you put Mares in there as well as an option, quite possibly. He's had a great season for them. Vote right now. I think I would put Salah in there. Because I think we've got to a point now where it's we've forgotten just how good this guy is. And his numbers are the only thing there to remind us of how wonderful he is as a player. Do you know what I mean? I just think he's, he's just next level. He's just completely next level. And he deserves to be put in this team for the amount of goals that he scored. He's also on 22 goals this season. Out bloody rageous. 22 goals, four assists. Like Kane's had a better season than him. But I think, you know, it, I think it's a simple one. I do think it's a simple one when it comes to, to those guys and, and goal-creating actions this season. Bruno, Harry Kane, Vardy is interesting. I think people slept on Vardy's season because the amount of assists that he's created for, for his teammates this year. Grealish, heartbreaking for him. He would be in there, I think, for sure, if he was in there. Do you know what's interesting as well, actually? One talking point was that um, up top, Cavani, in terms of shots that become goals, his percentage was like 60% or something, like something, I don't know, sorry, it was 27%, but shots on target, 64%. Like he has been lethal for Man United this season. But when it comes to this decision, I feel like this is an easy one. I think we go with, I go with Salah. I think you guys in the chat, I think you've gone with Salah. I don't think De Bruyne, with the injuries that he's had, I don't think he's, I don't think he's put forward the numbers like he has, you know, previously. And Mount is an option, I, so this is what happens on the left-hand side. I think Mount is... If I don't... I wanted to put Mount in my team of the year. So we move over to the left-hand side. Salah takes the place on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I really wanted to put Mount in. I did. And I, I actually had a, an initial draft and I put in him. And the reason I put him in there was because of... And I think if you guys want to put him forward, I understand it. Because his key passes are... Are pretty pretty special this season and i think the, the although those who are watching chelsea play will know just how great he's been this season but for for everyone else you will just look at the numbers and you'll think that he's not he's not done that much right let's have a look at some of his stats here because i think it's like shot creating actions i think he's right up there for that look he's second 150 like miles off de bruyne obviously he's played more minutes his live passes a, a little bit lower down when it comes to that that metric, but from dead uh, from dead balls, um, free kicks, he's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant from this season. And so when you put those bits together, that's kind of suggests that he is, for me, it's down to him. You could put Foden in there, you could put Rashford in there for his goals because I love him on that left hand side. I think you've got to put Son in there as well though, because Son with his expected assists. The fact that he's gone so far beyond his uh, expected goals this season, I think that's got to be remembered in all of this. I think I've just gone to the same thing there, haven't I? Let's see where else we might want to look here. Shooting might be the one. Expected goals. I think that's where Son is up there, right up there for that one as well. Like I think Son. Like when I looked at his goals, maybe this one's the best way to do it. How can you not have someone in the team of the season when they've scored seventeen and assisted ten? That's, and that's probably down to Werner letting down Mount with a lot of this. Because I, lo I, like, I love Mount. I think he's like... My, my eye test, I would put Mount in there. But when I look at those numbers, when I see 17 goals and 10 assists, is it down to the style of play? Of course it is a little bit, but he's completely gone past his XG as well. He's gone miles past his XG this season. Where is he? Here he is. If we have a look at Sun this season. Is it so non penalty XG? Non penalty XG is 9.3. <laughs> he scored 17 goals. And he's gone past his XG when it comes to assists as well. I don't think you can sleep on that. So it comes down. It's not about me though, it's about you guys. You guys have to make the decision now. So I would put forward Mount, 
Foden we can talk about, but I don't. I think in future seasons he's come alive this season. He's come of age this season. But is he in the team of the year? I wouldn't put him in there. And it, let's just see if I'm missing anyone else. I don't think I am. I think it's Song Hun Min, and I think it's Mason Mount. I think those are your two options on the left hand side for for me this season. And my, uh, Grealish, I get Grealish, but I think he's been injured for too long. I think that's my problem with that. So Mount or Son, vote right now. Who do you want to go for? And if there's a, a wave of others, then so be it. So be it. Okay, the voting. Son, it oh, it's close. It is close. God, you've got to keep this chat open. I think... Oof, I think it's... I think it's Son. I think Son's got it in the chat. So you have voted. Wow. Right, guys, I'm going to reveal my team of the season and I'm going to reveal a notable uh, team of the season as well because I just wanted to give a shout out to some people as well. Where is Son? Let's get him in there. There he is, bang. So this is your team. So stick around because I'm going to show you a notable mentions team and my team. But this is your team that you, the chat, have created. Congratulations. I hope you're happy with that. I think that's a pretty strong team. I think you've made some really good choices. And I'm, I'm real chuffed with this community. And people are just like not spamming it because it's their team. Um, here is, let me show you a couple of other teams then. So here is, here is my notable mentions team. So in my notable mentions team, I wanted Casper Schmeichel. I think I needed to kind of just highlight. I think his, his passing range is, is so good. Yeah, get your honourable mentions in here, guys. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. We'll, we'll have a look at who you think deserves a bit more credit and hasn't got it. But in terms of notable mentions, people that won't be spoken about. Reese James, I just think this guy is unbelievable. And I know Trent fans will be getting angry about that. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the, the squad um, tomorrow, but I just think he has come of age this season. I, I think he's so fantastic. Even in that FA Cup final, he plays right-sided centre-back, which is something Gareth Southgate will be quite pleased to have seen, and he he kept Vardy pretty quiet and, and made him move position. I think there's a massive comment to be made there on that, and I think he's had a, a good season. He's I just think he's mustard. Um, Harry Maguire, great season. Esri Concer, I think a couple of the Aston Villa players deserve a bit more credit and they haven't got it. And I think it's because there are sort of bigger names in front of them. Matt Target, what season he's had for uh, for Aston Villa this season. And it's probably down the other end. They just haven't scored enough goals um, to get themselves in it. I've gone with a 4-2-2-2 here because, like I said, I wanted Mason Mount in my team of the year, but I just couldn't get it done. I just couldn't find a way to get him in there. Uh, Basuma, I think Basuma's on his way to a bigger club. I think that's going to happen. I think he's proven that both with the ball. Uh, I did a video earlier in the season which spoke about the amount of times he clears the ball. He doesn't. You know, he wins the ball and then gives it to someone else. He's not just defending out and out. I think he's had a great season. Yuri Tillemans, we spoke about him as well. Nat Phillips, great shout, guys. I think he's had a good season as well. And Bukaya Saka, I just, he had to be spoken about. I think he's it's there's big the problem with him is that he's been carrying that team on his back and so the numbers don't kind of highlight just how good a season he has had this year but he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done this season and uh, I, I think if you can get a better Arsenal team around him then he's just going to continue to thrive another player that is what I really like about a lot of these players is that they can play in different positions now Reese James can Reese James could literally play any position and he would be a, a professional you know a Premier League footballer Bukayo Saka, it's getting pretty close. I think the only thing he doesn't play centre-back because he's not big enough. But Bukayo Saka, shout out to him. What a player. And then the front two, you know, for these two players to come into the division, Eze as well, shout out to you, my guy. But Bamford to score the goals that he scored, Watkins to score the goals that he scored this season, I think they both deserve huge credit. No one, Watkins, I think people were hoping that he might be able to do something. But Patrick Bamford, no one was saying a single thing about him. Um, at the start of the season, everyone was writing him off, and he's had, he's just done brilliantly. So those are my notable mentions. Team of the season, here it comes. This is my team of the season, and uh, I got it's typical me, right? I got mixed up between not mixed up, but I like got caught between appreciate the numbers, but also trust your eye. And the the one that really broke my heart was was the Mount one. Um, there's another team for another day where I kind of go through my favourite players, but this is my team of the season. So Kufal, Fofana, Emi Martinez, what a season he's had. Ruben Diaz, um, Luke Shaw, a left back. I wanted Hoiberg and Gundogan. Oh, Gundogan, fucking hell. Gundogan. Um, that was my three. And then Harry Kane. So not a million miles, 
maybe I've kind of talked you into it, but you guys, you guys thought differently on a, a couple. The right back position, Cancelo, um, Suchek, you put in in right back, which I can show. Let me show you your team again. But this was my team. Um, I put Sun in there because of those numbers. I think you can't not be in the league when you score 17 goals and 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 assist 10 goals. I just think you have to. It has to happen. But yeah, your this is your team. You got Cancelo and Suchek. Those are the two changes. But otherwise, a lot of these positions we are of. Uh, the same mind which is lovely so there you have it guys i hope you've enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it please do consider subscribing to the channel we have got some amazing content on the way some really good euro previews we're diving into all the big countries so they'll be coming soon in the next couple of weeks tomorrow i will be doing uh, my england squad the 26 man squad final squad that i would take so join me for that tomorrow uh, as well and um, plus obviously reactions to the games and of course we've got the euros and we've got to get behind the boys england are going to try and bring it home as our scotland as our wales and i might try and do a scotland video at some point as well see if i can find a way to do that uh, anyway guys uh, if you've enjoyed the video if you've enjoyed this stream then join me again tomorrow hit the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time all the best goodbye